Well, hello everyone. It's me, Anna Warner. Um, I am excited to be on here with you um, this evening. I have something that I would like to share um, that I feel the Lord has showed me is a word for now. And it's a word, honestly, you, I don't know where you are in your walk with the Lord. Um, but even, I want to say this, even for those of us who are more seasoned in our walk with the Lord and could be ministry leaders, I feel like this is a word for you this evening. So before I dive into it, hi, um, I'm Anna. Nice to meet you if you've never met me before. Um, I am a seer and um, that means that I primarily see. God gives me revelation through the gift of seeing whether he shows me visions, shows me um, prophetic words, shows me healing that's needed to happen, things like that. You can look the word seer up in the Bible and actually go ahead and study the word of God. Um, it's really important. Um, study about Samuel, study, study about Gad the prophet, study about Elijah. Um, those are just some examples of seers. So that being said, I just, I always have to say that because seers, um, we have to be grounded in the word of God, right? And out of the place of actual intimacy with the Lord, do we receive revelation? So sorry, my voice is kind of squeaky right now. I just got back from um, ministering like three <laughs> different conferences. So I've been preaching a lot and my voice is kind <clears> of <throat> scratchy. So, okay, here's the thing. I want to dive right in. Um, oh, I forgot to say, by the way, I'm, I'm also a mom. I have a seven-year-old son and a nine-year-old daughter, and I'm a wife to my beautiful husband, Sam. We're going to be married 13 years this year. Um, so yay. So just so you know, like I also have full on mom, wife, um, travel. I'm an author. Um, you can read, I've written several books. I'll make sure I list them. Um, they're listed there, you know, um, all the different books um, I've written as well. I want to invite you to, uh, if you're interested in receiving more um, understanding about the seer, the gift of the seer as um, in the body of Christ today, what that means, what does it look like, how to use that with the gift of discernment. I want to invite you, there's a mentorship that I'm doing online, and it is for the month of April. So it's still open. As of today, there's about 50 spots available. So I want to invite you to that. You can go to my website, AnnaWarner.org, my name, .org, and you can see that there. You can click on it and get more information. We go, um, well, you'll get all the information. I don't need to go over all that right now. There's teachings that I'll send you. There are new teachings, this course. And then you'll be, there's live Q&A sessions um, where I'm pouring into you guys as a class. And everyone that takes the mentorship, we cover you guys in prayer as you're going through it. So I am really excited for this next new uh, class. It's online so that people join in from every nation. It's amazing. And also, as soon as I do the lives, I press record so that you can watch it later because I understand I'm a mom. I get it. Life happens. Things come up. You may not be able to join that live class, but you'll forever have that course. So I want to invite you to that. It's beginning in April. So you have a short time left to join in. There's 50 spots left, I think, as of today. All right. So Father, I just thank you that you're releasing your presence through this right now. God, we love you, Father. It's our joy um, just to serve you, Lord. God, I pray that um, from glory to glory, God, we would grow in understanding your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So how many of you um, have felt recently like you've been hit with a level or a measure of fear? And this fear seems like, okay, I've dealt with fear before. Why is this coming back? Why is this full circle hitting me again right now? What is going on? I just want to say, um, recently I was taken in a vision and the Lord showed me in this vision, I saw all these different ministry leaders um, standing. Um, it was like the edge of a, uh, like a cliff kind of 
and it was a grassy field that there was a cliff cliff edging and there was all these different ministry leaders and people there gathered and i saw in this vision these eagles swooping by swooping by and it was like the eagles were swooping by to take people to their destination right but there was space in between the cliff and the eagle like you actually had to run and jump and jump onto that eagle to soar and so there's this thing of jumping now like okay god has given you your assignment it's now time to run and 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 fulfill that and and step out in faith towards that thing but when i looked at the group there was actual like blocks on people's feet so there was something weighing them down and i saw that it was fear it was literal fear and i'm speaking this to you because i i believe that you're watching this for a reason tonight and there are many seasons you've walked through in the past where you have stepped out in faith there's you are you you know the word of god you're grounded in it you know how to hear from god you know how to step out in faith when god says step out but recently it's felt like what suddenly i'm hit with fear again and i just i feel stuck stuck right now is that you can you relate to what i'm saying right now just put in the comments so i know i'm talking to somebody here so um obviously the lord right now is in a season where he's 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 bringing us up as a fearless bride right that walk in the gift of discernment and faith childlike wonder and love and are grounded in the word amen um but i believe fear is one of the biggest tactics of the enemy in this present hour and it's really important i want to take note that and mention to you that fear sometimes hits you will hit beef so you have your assignment of god and sometimes the warfare comes either right before or after. We tend to think of the warfare as when we're doing the assignment, but I've seen the pattern. I have seen this pattern enough times to know, like where, say I'm gonna go preach or minister somewhere, and I'm like, God's gonna, I know he wants to pour out his spirit. And then, and then right before there's so much warfare that I walk through, um, that like literally just happened right before I went to conference in Illinois, which was incredible. Oh my goodness, Jesus moved and, and to him, the glory, like what happened? I'm still, you guys, I'm still processing incredible miracles that happened there. But, but the week before was like, oh my goodness, God, where are you? You know, like the warfare was so intense. And then I've seen it sometimes also at the after side of things where I come home to some warfare. So just be aware of that. Like be aware of getting your, on a side note, get your intercessors to cover you, not just when you're doing your assignment, but on the, the end, the book ends, I want to say. All right. So this scripture um, the scripture I want to bring to your attention today is 2 Timothy 1.7. We know this scripture pretty well, but if you're new to the word, um, I want to read it to you. This is Paul. Apostle Paul, he's writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. So you've got to think, what are the golden nuggets? You know, Apostle Paul wants to leave the golden nuggets, if you will, to his spiritual son kind of like what will i what would i want to pass on to my son my daughter what are the keys that i want to want to leave with them so he's writing from prison to his son god has not given us for god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and of sound mind now in different translations i'm gonna to have to translate this to you and, and I went to look at different translations the spirit of fear is also written as timidity power in the Greek context here this word is the dunamis power which means the miraculous power of God the force power and mighty strength of God that's the kind of power he's talking about okay love and of sound mind and when I looked at um 
the Greek context of the sound mind, um, it also means disciplined mind. Isn't that interesting? Okay. And I'll go back over that in a second, but I, I think it's interesting sometimes to look at the different scriptural references um, and look at the original in Hebrew or Greek, like what was intended. When I want to encourage you this. When you survive or war off an attack of the enemy, then you often have gained ground in that area. So you will have authority in that place. Let me share with you, um, and, and, and sometimes I get so excited, I'm like rambling, but <laughs> let me share with you a story. When I was in, okay, first, be like totally honest, I used to have so many struggles with my throat, just constant, constant like warfare with my throat. And I mean, it was such warfare because it would literally come on me. I'd be totally fine. And then right before... I would go to preach or minister, suddenly I'd have like no voice, just like, 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 and I'm not like scratchy and my voice is scratchy today because I've been preaching and ministering a lot and, and speaking a lot, but, and it just needs to rest. <laughs> but I mean, no voice like whatsoever would just come on me or I'd get like this massive infection right before I'd have to preach. Right. And, um, when I was, okay, so, and then I would have to war that thing off and pray and war and pray and war, right? And I was like, why? Why does this keep happening? God, what is happening here? So when I was in Africa, we were with um, Heidi and Roland Baker, Mozambique. This is so many years ago, um, like years, years ago, okay? But when I was there, I remembered in one of the worship times, um, nobody knew, but I was asking the Lord, like, why do I get this? Like, what is going on? At this point, my throat, um, one of my tonsils was on the right side. was swollen, It was swollen up like a golf ball. I mean, it was so swollen. Um, it was, you could see it protruding outside of my neck, right? Really infected. And I was so mad. I, I was mad at the enemy. Why is this happening to me? You know, and, and then I was like, Lord, show me what the root is. There must be a root. If this continually comes up all the time when I'm going to minister and I was going to minister, I was going to do ministry that day. Why is this coming up all the time? Only then, like there has to be a root for this to stick, right? That wasn't in my mind. I was like, why? And I was like, Lord, show me if there's a root. So in worship, I'll never forget. I was taken in a vision and the Lord showed me a place of a root that was there. He showed me something. And um, it was just for a second, I saw something that had happened in my past and I prayed and I repented and I prayed to break the trauma off of that event that had happened. And then I prayed for that infection to be gone in Jesus name. And my neck, it just went like the golf ball says, just went like that in, in, and it was totally healed. Like my throat was totally healed. Okay. And it was like, oh my goodness, God did it. So fast forward later and Sam and I were overseas again. I think this was in India and my throat got all swollen again. And I was like, wait a second. Like, and it got where I lost my voice again. And I'm like, what is going on? And I said, no, like I dealt with the root of this. And I'm thinking, Lord, who do I have pray for me? Who, who can lay hands on me right now? to pray and deliver me of this thing. And I'm in the shower, you know, it was a bucket shower. And the Lord said, um, you know, Anna, he said, you, you have dealt with this. You actually have authority. Now you cast this out, you cast this out, you lay hands and cast this out. So I did, I was like, okay, this is weird. Jesus. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I pray and I break in Jesus name. I break the power of this principality, whatever is attacking my throat right now. And I command this infection, this thing to absolutely stop right now and go right now in the name of Jesus. Just like that. My throat was totally better. Can I, I know hallelujah, right? But can I tell you like, we're, can I tell you church? Like, we are at that place where it's like you have Christ within you. You have Christ within you. 
It's time for you to lay hands and take authority over that thing. Amen? You have Christ within you. Take authority over it. Take authority over whatever that principality is. Apply the blood of Christ and declare freedom and healing in the name of Jesus. Amen? I, I just feel this thing because fear, I know, has so gripped many of us recently, but it is time that we take authority over this thing and say, uh-uh, no, 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 enough is enough. Amen? You are so powerful because you have Jesus within you. If anything, I felt like I have to just remind somebody that tonight. And it's hard when you're going through a season of totally worrying, right? Because you're just like, I, like, war, not worrying, worrying. It sounds the same, I know. <laughs> but I'm saying warring, spiritual warfare, where you're warring in the spirit. When you're going through a season like that, it's hard to feel like I have Christ within me. I can, I can stand on, on the rock. He is my rock. I can stand. I'm not shaky. I can stand because he is my everything. He's my restorer, my Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha. You know, you can stand, right? It's hard to feel like that when you're in the season. But maybe I'm here just to encourage you. Listen, you have Christ within you. God has given you authority over this principality. You command that thing to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Amen? Here are some ways fear hits us, though. Um, I wrote this down, so I'm going to read you some of my notes that I jotted down that the Lord was showing me. Um, fear right now gets our focus off the possibility with God and onto feeling swallowed by the impossibility of, of the situation. We know this with Peter, right? He had all the faith in the world when Jesus called him out of the boat. Peter, come walk on water, right? Until he saw the wind. And then he began to sink. Um, Jonah is more literal. Jonah in the Bible, he's fleeing in fear of going to Nineveh, right? And then he gets, we know the story, he's fleeing, he's running away from it, and he gets, what happens? He gets swallowed, um, and there's a great wind. Again, there's this thing about the wind. There's a great wind and a storm. He gets swallowed, but the whale comes, in, and big fish, it comes and swallows him, right? Um, fear also squashes our ability to dream our ability to create. Um, I've seen this. Um, I, there's lots of different studies with psychology and stuff, but but with children. So as as an example, if a child can, grew up in a really uh, controlling, abusive environment, parental environment, and then say you take them to like they're doing art therapy, and you're like, go create. You can make whatever. It's kind of like, what do you mean? Like. I, what do you mean? How? What? Like, I need specific instructions. Um, this ability to think, create outside the box, to dream with God, to co-labor, like the idea of co-laboring with God is hard and to grasp and understand if we're in this place of fear. Does anyone connect with what I'm saying here? All right. Fear will shut down your purpose. Um, you'll feel this thing right now over you of, I can't. I can't do that. Like, think in the Bible, like Esther, Queen Esther was like, I can't go into the king's palace. Don't you know that whoever gets summoned, in, like whoever goes before they're summoned could possibly die. I can't do that. Even Moses was like, uh, God, do you think you have the wrong person here? I can't lead the people. I have this speech problem. Um, I have this, I, you know, did you really think this through God? I have, I'm not really good at public speaking. I can't. Okay. Fear will shut down your purpose, your, your belief. No, I can in Jesus name. I can. Fear also will alter your reality. Okay. I've seen this a lot of times. So fear actually can be the thing behind, it can be what drives people towards another behavior. So whether it be addictions or even controlling personalities being like, because it's fear of losing control. So what happens is that person rises up and in, in, in struggles with being controlling. And this can happen in leadership sometimes, but at a core, it's fear of losing the control. Um, resistance to change. 
There's fear of losing control there. Fear of failure can be there. So it's easier than to not start if I fear of failure or even delay um, the process. I'm like, I just got back from being gone three different conferences, trips, just I got back and in, we're in the middle of moving as well right now. So I'm like, oh, I don't like, I'm just like, okay, I have fear this is never going to end <laughs> this process right now. I'm looking in my office. I'm like, oh, like there's a lot to be done. So I've delayed y'all. Y'all need to pray for me. I've, I'm just, as I confess it, I'm going to get free, right? I've, but I've delayed from starting really cleaning up this place. I need to just dive in today. So I'm going to do it right after I get off here with y'all. I'm going to do it. I'm going to start clean because it's just never going to go away, right? It's just, we're in, we're in the, the swirl of, of when you go away, when I've been traveling and it's just like there's a lot I need to do when I get home as well as with the kids as well as because we're moving. So everything's in boxes right now. We're like, whoa, it's, it's on. Okay. But there can be fear. We can delay what God's asked us to do or procrastinate because there's fear at a core. And then fear also shuts down our own belief and um, miracles. Fear can also look, uh, mask itself and look like intimidation um, or even offense. But at the core, it's fear's what's driving it, driving it. So there's a scripture in Mark 6, and um, it's the weirdest, craziest scripture because even Jesus, Jesus comes to his hometown. Sorry, my phone was ringing. Sorry about that, guys. I thought that was off. Jesus was coming to his hometown and he, it's like the one place that he could not do. It says he could not do many miracles. He laid hands on a few people, but he could not do many miracles, which is crazy. Okay. Jesus, this is God's son, not being able to do miracles. Why is the question in the scripture? It says, they said, this is not this, the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James aren't his sisters with us. I, like, isn't, you know, there, like there was a fence that was there. Like, we know this guy, isn't this their son? Isn't that his sisters and his brothers? Who does he think he is? Like doing all these things. There's no belief here. Okay. There was unbelief and offense and it shut down the miracles from flowing. Okay. So sometimes fear also masks itself like this pride. You know, I may not be the expert in this area and maybe I will have to change some things or get schooling or learn because I'm not the expert anymore. I said it. Okay, it could be pride. All right, here's the good news. I have good news, I promise. Perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. So I am believing today for you watching this right now, someone you're watching this, I don't know why you're on here, but I know that God wants you to step out in faith. You know the assignment God has given you But it's time now to not let fear be the thing that is holding you back. It's keeping you stuck. It's time now. And some of that is partially change. Things are shifting, right? So we have to shift with where God shifts. It doesn't mean you don't take wisdom with you. You take wisdom with you, but if God is saying, this is the direction that I'm asking you to go right now, well, the anointing will be where God is asking you to be, right? And in the timing that he's asking you to do it, that's where the anointing will be. That's where we need to be. Amen. All right. Perfect love casts out fear, meaning as you're in 
come back, turn, turn full circle, and come in His presence. Get fill of His words. Get in your Bible daily. Read His Bible. And then get with the Lord and just say, Father, here I am. I need you to renew me today, God. Help me, Lord, and pray this with me. You have Christ. If you're listening to this and you're not a believer in Jesus, I just want to say this. Today might be the best day of your life. There's this King Jesus who wants to be king in your life. He loves you. He loves you so much that he died on a cross for you so that you may have eternal life with God. And you can pray right now and just say, Jesus, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm not perfect, God, and I need your good and perfect love. Would you come be God of my heart, King of my life right now. Come enter my heart and help me, Jesus. I dedicate my life to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that with me, please put in the comments, I just prayed that. Because guess what? Your name is now written in heaven. And you will have eternal life with God. There is no sugar coating this. There is either, it, there's either heaven or there's hell. Apart from Jesus, we are destined for hell because we are sinners, right? But when you've accepted Jesus into your life, you have the hope of eternal life with the King of Kings. Amen. And if you are already a believer, you have Jesus in you. Pray this with me if you've been hit with fear recently. Father, Lord, I repent right now for agreeing with fear. I have really been struggling with this. I don't know where I've suddenly believed in the voice of the enemy more than I've believed in your voice, God. But Lord, I repent for agreeing with the enemy. Father, Lord, I repent for it. Break my agreement with fear. And Jesus, today, Lord, I ask you just for faith. I need an impartation today of faith. I choose faith, but I need an impartation of faith now to step out and do what you've asked me to do. Faith and obedience, God. Help me to obey your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to pray something over you. I hope you repeated that with me. I want to pray something over you now also. All right. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I break any uh, spirit of confusion that has come over you, come over the body of Christ right now. Lord, I bind that spirit of fear. I command that thing to come out now. Out, out, out in the name of Jesus. Your perfect love casts out fear. So, Father God, I thank you, Jesus, that you would release and impart, just release just a, a refreshed encounter today with your love. With your love. Thank you, Jesus, that now we choose to go forward, move forward, grounded in your word, grounded in your love, but not partnering with fear any longer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Whew. I feel fire all over me. I don't know about you, um, but that was a shift. A shift. I, I can't wait to hear the testimonies. Make sure you send them to me, the testimonies of what just happened for you. You felt something shift inside of you. How this week plays out for you now. I can't wait to hear back. Just as a reminder, the next Seer Mentorship School is happening in April. If you missed that, I mentioned it at the beginning of this.
but the next uh, SEER uh, mentorship that I do online course, it's a month long course that I pour into the students on the SEER anointing, the gift of seeing, um, the gift of discernment of spirits and walking in healing ministry. Um, that will be in the month of April. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check out my website on warner.org. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you be part of the school if you choose to be. Otherwise, I do want to mention also that I don't know if you know this, but every Wednesday at 7 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock in the evening, that's Eastern Standard Time. So I'm on, uh, personally, I'm Central. Where I live is Central Standard Time. So for me, that is 6 o'clock. But it's... 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So you'll have to do the math of depending on where you are. But um, I have a television show I'd love to, and it's free. You can watch it on the Sid Roth app, which is the ISN It's Supernatural app. So ISN app on your phone, or you can also go to Sid's website, Sid Roth's website, and watch it live every Wednesday, which is really fun. And season two is coming out soon. I'm really excited. All right, guys, it's been a joy and an honor to just hang out with you this evening. And I pray that you are walking from, we walk from glory unto glory, that you daily are getting to know the Lord and look more like him every day. In Jesus name. Take care, guys.